literacy. And this is a liberal arts course that is open to our sophomores through seniors. And uh, it's about personal finance, including you know, credit cards and taxes, and of course, health insurance. And um, the other side is really about career exploration and also job search tools like your resume and LinkedIn profile and Handshake profile. Um, last week, well, actually what I should say is um, before this class even started, we sent out a survey to everybody who was taking the class. And one of the questions was, are you interested in starting your own studio or business? And 75% of the students in the class said, yes, I am interested in doing this. So last week, we had Sarah Hartman come and talk about the business incubator, which was very exciting for students who want to take it as a class and alums that there would be an option of um, potentially getting a fellowship to um, take the course as well. And Rebecca Wright, who is my colleague in career development, um, has a whole other life um, as an artist and also the creator of Bikey Face. And we both know that we get a lot of requests in career development from employers who are um, saying, I'd love for you to manage my social media as part of this job description. So we kind of talked about that and Rebecca is going to share with you um, with that framework um, her uh, business of bikey face and just things that you, you know, kind of taking a peek behind the scenes. So I'm going to hand it over to Rebecca and say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Wright. Um, I work in career development as the internship manager, um, but also outside of mass art, I'm an artist, um, an illustrator, and um, I've been doing something called bikey face for over 10 years at this point. Um, and um, basically it's a w online web comic and I'll tell you a little bit about how it started. Um, so um, it's an online web comic that I started in 2011 and it started as originally just a casual way to, I was looking for a way, I just moved to Boston. I was looking for a way to connect with other people who bike in Boston. Um, I started on a, another site called bostonbiker.org, which is kind of a community site for cyclists in the city. Um, and people can start their own blogs and talk about their experiences. Um, I just, as an illustrator, I just started posting random illustrations of biking around the city um, and not really thinking too much about it and assumed I'd, like most blogs, um, kind of abandon it um, pretty quickly. Um, and then I noticed that I was getting a lot of web traffic from all over the country, New York City, and um, it was getting shared kind of a lot. Um, and I had somehow accidentally stumbled into something that um, kind of, you know, developed a following. So at that point, I regrouped and rebranded and renamed it and built a website. Um, so I called it Bikey Face. Um, and it's basically um, just daily experiences biking in the city. Um, and it basically is just kind of, you know, you know, things that kind of happen um, like this, passing a sports car on my bike while the sports car is stuck in traffic um, or just kind of noticing things around me. Um, and um, as I started doing this, it, you know, got a pretty big following. I think now I'm um, two and a half, almost three million views of the website itself. Um, and um, so it kind of, it kind of picked up pretty quickly. And so um, I capitalized on a little bit. Um, I, you know, started doing some web comics, um, some books and sold them. So I did kind of two books on like biking around the city, um, which has sold thousands of copies and kind of became like a bike advocacy thing to kind of teach people you know, kind of uh, how to how to successfully navigate the city. So that's a little bit about um, Bikey Face and where it started. Um, as part of it, and part of the place where it started kind of taking off was on social media. So the um, the blog itself, it's just the static place, um, and no one really necessarily knows it exists until kind of that is shared out. And social media is where things were being shared. Um, and um, 
I kind of, you know, the same time as I was starting this up and noticing, you know, it was kind of attracting a natural audience. I, you know, started kind of building a social media presence. Um, so the main presence that I kind of started with at that time was Twitter. Um, I noticed that a lot of the traffic was coming from Twitter. And so I'm going to share my Twitter profile. So um, this is kind of my Twitter profile. Um, I joined um, July 2011, kind of when this was starting. I didn't really kind of get going for a little bit, um, maybe more in the fall. Um, and over time, I've kind of built a following. Um, and the way, reason why I think Twitter is kind of became the fuel for how I found an audience is that Twitter kind of compared to some other social media platforms is very conversation based. Um, and it's where people like to have conversations, talk to each other, talk about a common interest, common ideas. Um, and it's very lightning quick. So things kind of get out there very fast and are shared very fast. Um, I think um, Instagram is also a, a good platform for visual artists, but it doesn't really have the same conversation. Um, you can kind of share an image, but it's not as easy to like repost the image or talk to the creator or talk to people who have sick shared interest. And so um, I found that like Twitter was kind of where, where I was kind of finding an audience. Um, and when I talk about audience, um, and this is something that I, I didn't really know, I was a little naive when I started um, because I was an artist first and, and I happened to bike, but um, there is a very large bike kind of, you know, group discussion group on Twitter. Um, and sometimes people joke about it because they, you know, <laughs> they very late and quick jump onto things and can, you know, share ideas or go after, go after people. Um, but there it's full of a lot of people who are very smart. They're, you know, urban planners, they're transportation planners, um, college professors, um, and then kind of ordinary people who bike. It's basically, it's a huge, it's a huge kind of like diverse sort of audience. Um, but it's a lot of people who are very interested in kind of safe streets, getting around without being stuck in traffic, um, not you know not not having to be tied to a car all the time. Um, so that's kind of where the audience is and kind of why this kind of picked up there. Um, so. As I started doing doing the cartoons, I would share them on Twitter every time I had a new post, and things would kind of get amplified even more and showed showed around um, beyond that. Um, and Twitter, it's kind of evolved over time. Originally, it was really text based, and now it actually kind of has, you know, had more of an ability to embed images. So um, it's kind of been working better um, over time. I've kind of seen seen it evolve as I've been using it. Um, so I kind of had to get up to speed on using Twitter. Um, so on Twitter, it's kind of, um, you know, it is much more conversation based. So there is a certain amount of kind of interaction that is helpful. Um, so it's more kind of putting something out there and it's going to be discussed. Um, and because of that, things kind of get shared. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of tweets. I kind of learned over time what sort of stuff goes you know, does well, what sorts of things doesn't do as well, what things are really kind of helpful about Twitter. Um, so here's an example of a tweet that I put out there, very text based. Um, and this one, it's gotten um, 242 retweets, 10 quote sheets, and about 1500 likes. Um, so that's kind of the basic numbers. And this is just text um, and I kind of realized that like Twitter is really easy for really short kind of succinct sorts of stuff um, that is easy to read that kind of like sparks a reaction. Um, when you're using Twitter um, to kind of know how well things are doing you can look at the likes um, but if you expand a tweet it actually is going to show you more and I'll kind of go over a little bit about this and what it means. So when you see a tweet, when you see the analytics, this is the data of kind of how many times a Twitter would, a tweet was viewed. So impressions, this is how many people this tweet, how many times this tweet came up in someone's screen on Twitter. They may have read it, they may not have read it, 
they may have scrolled right past it. So that's 65,000. So that, that's quite a bit, and that's more than the followers I have on Twitter. Um, so definitely kind of went beyond my initial following. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily mean they, you know, they engage with it, they could have just ignored it. Um, media views, this is how many people kind of expanded the tweet. Um, because this doesn't have a media in it, an image or video, it's not as helpful. Um, the other thing that is kind of the, the good best number is total engagements. Um, and so this is basically the number of how many people engaged with the tweet. That means they, they liked it, they retweeted it, they quote tweeted it, or they expanded it. And so that's almost um, 3000. So that's kind of the total um, of that. Um, so generally, when you're looking at the data, it's really, it's not so much about how many followers you have, or how many likes, it really is the interaction. Um, and that's really kind of shows how, how well um, something is kind of being kind of interacted with on social media. Um, so I'm going to show a um, one with an image and images sometimes catch attention more just because visual, you can see things right away. Um, this is a, a cartoon I posted um, right after lockdown and people weren't really out doing things. Um, so, um, and then this one, you know, again, is kind of getting sort of like a response of likes, retweets, um, quote tweets. Um, so it'll again, it'll show how many impressions, this is how many times it was seen in someone's feed and how many times people engage with it. So this actually has a higher engagement rate than the one without, um, without an image. Um, so that means there's, yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, so the other one was just text and it had media views, but this is an image and it didn't have the media views. Do you know why that's the case? I'm oh, not sure. It? There is, there oh. is actually, you can do expand more. So you, oh. you can actually dig deeper. So there's, it had third, the other one with text had 35 media engagements. This one has 20,000. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So you can dig a lot deeper on stuff and some, some, some info is going to have more, more be more helpful. Um, but I think by seeing these two difference, these both tweets kind of, you know, were picked up on and retweeted, but the image definitely is going to kind of get more engagement. Um, so this is the sort of things I would kind of use to kind of, you know, share my, share what was going on, share my cartoons. Um, using images, I mean, text is also fine as well, but as an artist, image, using images is a great way to kind of get things out there and get them picked up on. And of course, um, having like a, an audience like um, people who bike is, is also helpful as well. Um, but it could be easily transferred to like finding, you know, um, comic book artists on Twitter because there are other, other groups who kind of congregate on Twitter as well. Um, I also, you know, would take sometimes retweet other people's um, images as well, just because I'm not the only cartoonist um, and, you know, found that was a way to kind of amplify them a little bit, but also kind of keep Twitter kind of active um, because sometimes I can't draw as fast as Twitter moves. Um, and because, you know, images do travel, it's a, a great way to kind of keep things, you know, kind of moving online and keeping, keeping um, the conversation going. Um, I have had, there's another type of tweet I like, I is, doesn't get as many, um, as much of a response, um, but I find it really useful on Twitter and I call it kind of the conversational tweet. So um, like I said, I, I bike, I'm an artist um, and I bike regularly in Boston. Um, and there's a, a local community on Twitter as well for biking and they actually use Twitter a lot for advocacy for kind of situations you kind of see on the ground in the city. Um, and it's kind of how I've met a lot of people, how I can in interact, but also kind of get attention to local issues. And so sometimes I actually, my tweets are a little bit about kind of, you know, day in the life, but actual situations where this is really about some cars that are parked illegally that's making it very hard to kind of see as, as I'm merging into traffic. Um, and you know, drivers can't see me, I can't see them. So I'm just calling attention to it and, you know, notifying like some, some um, other social media groups on 
Twitter to kind of get that looked into. Um, and then what happens is other people kind of respond. So, um, you know, this turned into an issue where there, there are parks all the time, part of construction. A community member flagged it to Suffolk Construction. They're responding. And as of this morning, those cars were finally <laughs> moved. So this is something that, you know, even though it doesn't necessarily go and get a thousand likes, um, it's it's something that is really useful for social media is that day-to-day -day interaction. And so um, again, it's not gonna have the same widespread interaction um, because it's very, very localized, but it also is very effective in that um, a lot of businesses are on social media doing a lot of customer service that way. And then also community members like other people who are bike and kind of get engaged. And so that's something that is also um, a, a kind of a good use of, of Twitter. So, and then sometimes I do a tweet that, you know, is not really that exciting um, and it gets very little tweet activity. So um, this is something that, you know, it's not necessarily bad. I mean, it, it gets some impression, some engagement, um, but it's just something to kind of to kind of take in and think about because you want to know what is effective on Twitter and what you know kind of how to um, plan and kind of you know know when to put something out there to kind of get amplified or shared. Um, so it'll it's just kind of information to help plan what sorts of stuff you want to kind of share on social media. Um, one other thing I think is awesome about social media is. I sometimes will tweet cartoons that are just hastily drawn. I'm having a conversation with another local person in Boston about, you know, drivers parking in bike lanes. Um, and this kind of conversation actually became a whole project where he, I, I drew some other illustrations for him and he actually built them and made them as a barrier in Boston to kind of keep drivers out there. So this actually kind of a project that came out, out on, um, came out of social media, out of a conversation, and then became real. Um, and this actually got covered by the Globe and other places and went kind of across the country like a wildfire. So it was one of those things that started on social media, went into real life, and then went back to social media. So um, this is just some ideas of kind of things that I've kind of experienced with um, social media. Um, it's, um, you know, not just kind of sharing artwork all the time or share, promoting myself, but it is kind of that conversation. Um, but it's also kind of, you know, adding something that, you know, is kind of interesting to other people um, and kind of um, when they go into social media, they, they see something they like and they want to share it and kind of participating that a little bit. Um, I'm not necessarily an expert on social media, but this has just kind of come out of kind of working on my own um, webcomic and um, kind of doing this over some time. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about kind of how you take this for yourself and how you kind of bring that to, um, you know, perhaps you're looking for an internship or job in social media or you're looking to kind of use social media as an artist. Um, and kind of what that what that might look for look like. So let me kind of switch over to my other slide deck. Okay. So um, this um, um, basically what I'm going to talk about is what employers are looking for, um, but this also applies if you are looking to do social media as your, your, for yourself, as an artist, or for your own business. Um, in career development, we've had uh, a lot of employers who are posting um, social, social media jobs or jobs that have a social media component. I think when I checked, um, we had about 200 um, last I checked. Um, generally, what employers are looking for it, they're not looking for a specific major or a specific background. They're really looking for um, kind of people who maybe know a little bit of design, some illustration, photography, video, and also writing. Um, because social media can be so, you know, 
it's multimedia. It's not just going to be text. It's not just going to be images. Um, design comes in sometimes, but it's not so much that everything is just graphic design or just um, writing. It's usually going to be, you know, um, a, a mix of everything. Um, so when employers are kind of posting at MassArt, they're specifically thinking someone who can kind of do uh, different things. Um, often employers look for some experience with social media, um, and it might depend on the employer and if they have a social media presence or if they're starting one, um, how big they are. Um, and it might depend on their role. Sometimes they'll have one person doing social media. Sometimes they have a whole department. Um, so it kind of varies, but usually when they're looking to hire, they're looking for someone who has some experience with social media. It might be on the kind of lower end for entry level or internships, um, but they're kind of assuming um, you have some experience. There is sort of the tendency occasionally with some employers to assume everyone who's a college student knows social media, um, but that's not necessarily the case. And also depending on how you use it, you may not necessarily know it in a professional context. Um, there's uh, um, sometimes when they post jobs, they assume you already know um, the primary social media platforms, um, which again, you know, um, may or may not be the case. Social media changes a lot, so the platforms will change um, a lot as well. So I want to give some examples of social media jobs that um, are out there. These are kind of the titles that you kind of see: social media marketer. Um, producer, um, assistant, manager, some variation of that. Sometimes it's social media and video editing. Um, a big one that I see is content creator. So this is, they're thinking of someone who can create images or media that will be shared online. Um, so that's what, again, why they're coming to MassArt. Um, and then, you know, uh, marketing and design, social media, sometimes it's a blend of some other things which may, may be social media related or not. Um, and then, visual marketing and digital marketing. Um, so that's just something that you'll probably kind of see out there. Um, and so a lot of them will be visual based. So um, when I talk about professional so social media, businesses will be using social media very different from you um, for your personal use. And then even um, uh, maybe slightly different if you're doing social media as a professional artist. So there are going to be some variations and some some similarities. So generally, an employer who is going to um, you know do social media, they have um, staff who um, speak on behalf of the organization um, or company. Um, and then if you're doing it as an artist, um, you would kind of treat it as yourself as the business um, as a professional artist and do social media on your own behalf. Um, generally, pr with professional so social media, there's a specific audience in mind. Um, so that is usually um, custom, it could be customers, it could be, um, you know, people who, who buy whatever is selling, it could be, you know, um, like an organization might be an advocacy based thing, they're trying to get people motivated to kind of help advance a cause. So they have, usually have a specific mind, um, audience in mind. And then because of that, the content is focused and very goal oriented. So they're looking at what things on social media are effective. They're looking at the analytics, how, how much engagement there is, and they're thinking like, how can we kind of get more reach out there and more engagement? Um, and so they're thinking um, more strategically about that. Um, they also usually have a specific tone um, and some brand guidelines. That's usually like making sure things kind of, you know, look like it came from their company um, and that the voice is the voice of the company. And that can be very different from every you know, every different company, person, organization is different. Some are much more casual um, and some are much more kind of formal. Um, so that's um, something to be aware of. And then analytics is a big thing. Um, and I should do a taste of it, but it actually can get much more complicated where you can download data, you could track it, you can chart it. Um, and some, some companies, especially larger ones will likely not, they'll hire someone who people to work on content and visual images, but they'll probably have another role that is more specifically digging into analytics and data. And often that would come, that would be a person who might have a um, back, background in um, business and marketing from like a business school. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. It does get a little more complicated, but 
smaller businesses, sometimes it's more casual and, you know, that's another hat that a social media person might wear. Um, and most companies, they're looking for that genuine engagement because, you know, likes and followers is not, ne not necessarily everything. They're looking for um, kind of to get things to move a little further than a few handful of people who happen to see it. Um, so that's kind of the goal that most people have. So I want to give you a kind of a, a look at what um, this might look in a job posting. So um, this, these are from some sample things that we have on our site right now. So like create original and engaging content. So you see that word engaging coming up. They're looking for something that's not just people are going to scroll past passively. They're going to you know, open it, look at it, respond to it. Um, ability to work within branding guidelines, create messaging within the voice of the organization. So that voice of the organization is kind of coming up. They want to make sure that it sounds professional, it sounds like their organization, um, and that it's professional looking. Um, another one mentioned engaging with our fans across social media profiles. So that conversation um, is a thing. So being able to kind of respond if someone kind of says something about on them on social media, um, engage it kind of like when I showed you the conversation I was having about um, vehicles parked um, and blocking a bike lane, um, the construction company chimed in and um, later kind of resolved it. So they're kind of using that to kind of engage, not necessarily with fans, with, but with um, people on social media. Um, so a lot of companies are looking for that conversational aspect and customer service aspect on social media. Um, and then, sorry, hold on. So um, another, another company um, says uh, they are looking for someone to help their team stay current in social or current in digital media trends and monitor competitors' content for new social strategies. So this is also kind of showing that even the, the so-called professionals in social media um, have to work to, to keep up with um, social media trends um, and also you know, spend a lot of time looking at its competitors and other people on social media to kind of see what they're doing and what works for them. Um, so this, I think because social media is such a new um, area and it's such a changing area, there is this constant need to learn and um, see what other people are doing and kind of replicate that. So um, in a way that might, that works for all of you if you're just starting out because um, no one is really an expert. Um, ultimately, they're all trying to just kind of stay ahead of the curve a little bit. So, um, you know, if you're interested in social media, it is something you can kind of, you know, watch what people do and kind of, you know, learn from that and learn as you go and know that platforms change, um, trends change. Um, it's a very kind of evolving field. So another thing that kind of comes up is, you um, um, strategy and organization. So um, another per, another post asks for someone to contribute to and help manage social channels, schedule and monitor monitor post review analytics to inform strategy, engage with community members. So they're mentioning um, monitoring the post to kind of see the reaction, um, checking the statistics, kind of see how things are doing, and decide on a strategy if you want if you know what's working, what's not working. And then again, engaging with um, community members. Um, and then I wanted to kind of point to this one just because this might come up. Um, familiar, familiarity with content management systems and a strong understanding of content differences across social media. So content man management systems are usually for kind of web where it's um, kind of a user-friendly system where it manages a lot of content in a kind of simple way. Um, uh, and kind of this is something that helps update websites, social media, things like that. Um, it's also helpful to know how content like images or words kind of vary on different platforms. So like I said, Twitter kind of was a great platform for me to share my stuff because my audience was there and it's very conversational. Um, Facebook is a little bit different. It has a conversation, but it kind of doesn't get shared in the same quickness and it kind of stays a little bit longer. Um, Twitter is very, you know, you know, every minute there's something new. So it's, it's very quick. And then Instagram is, um, is different where there's less conversation. It's just more showing an image and getting 
getting a response. Um, and it has evolved where now they have um, shopping on Instagram and things like that. But knowing, knowing how the message and the content is different on each platform is helpful. So I'm going to talk a little bit about strategy and goals. Um, so a lot of professional social media um, is tied to um, strategy. Um, and companies, they do a lot of, um, hold on, going forward, okay. They do a lot of um, reviewing their analytics, um, seeing what's effective, who interacted with it, and how they interacted with it. Um, and that's kind of how they develop a strategy. Um, through analytics, you can see what times of day people tend to engage with your social media um, for international sorts of businesses that can, you know, that can be really helpful because you have, you know, different times around the world where people kind of engage. You can kind of tell when the UK is kind of coming online and interacting where maybe North America is asleep. Um, so it kind of helps inform when you want to tweet. Um, like for example, I know that when I tweet, usually 11 a.m. before lunchtime on a Monday through Thursday, it gets shared much more than if I tweet on a Saturday where people are out doing things and probably riding bikes and not looking at Twitter. So that's the sort of things that analytics kind of help, help people kind of know and make decisions about. Um, and that kind of helps develop a strategy. Generally, a, um, a strategy is something that kind of you do over time. It's not necessarily one tweet. It's usually like months and months of data it kind of adds up and kind of shows what's working, what's not working. Um, engagements are usually better, th uh, more important than followers because you want people who are actually interacting with stuff um, more than just passively scrolling past it. Um, and each platform is going to be a little bit different and have its own strengths um, and weaknesses. So, um, and this is kind of an important thing to, to know, um, many employers, because it's not just one tweet that kind of makes your social media, it's going to be, you know, post every single day for months or years. It takes a long time to really kind of build up to consistency and to, to kind of build up the following. Um, and because of this, like, um, there's a lot of planning that goes into it, planning what images are gonna be shared, when things are gonna be shared, what the text is. Um, and when it comes to uh, a, an employer, they're not going to have a fun thought and post on social media right then on the, on the fly. They're actually planning in advance when things are gonna go out. Um, and so they kind of schedule this. Um, they also will use uh, image libraries, um, content management systems um, or asset libraries to kind of store those images. So sometimes they will have a team that's creating images that can be used. And then another person who is kind of taking those images, writing up text to go with it and scheduling when that tweet will go out. So it becomes sort of like more of a, you know, a planned, um, planned thing. Um, and then they also usually have someone kind of engaging in the moment um, as, as kind of people respond. So I'm going to, take a moment right now to show you an example of what this looks like. I don't personally plan or schedule my um, social media post. I have gone through times in the past where I have. Um, it kind of depends on what I have going on. Um, but one platform that's an example of this is Hootsuite. And there's a lot of other platforms like this. Um, and Hootsuite is a, a dashboard where you can add different feeds. So I have Twitter and Instagram. And you can, with one, um, kind of with a little planning, you can actually both send out a tweet and an Instagram at the same time. Um, I, this first column is basically who I'm following, so I can just follow that feed. Um, the, the second column is people who are tweeting at me. And then um, this next column is scheduled. So if I wanted to schedule some tweets coming up, I would do that. Um, I can also go to the publisher and you can actually see the whole calendar and start putting like, say I wanna tweet every single day. I can kind of create, um, add something, pick what I'm gonna do it. Is it gonna to go to um, Instagram? Is it gonna to go to Twitter? Um, write, write the text in here. Um, and then if I need to add images, I do it there. And then you kind of set the time you know, 
uh, that you want it to go out, like say if I wanted 11 a.m., since that's a good time that I've noticed people tend to do this, um, I can post it there um, and just kind of pick the day. So it allows you to kind of schedule things in advance so you're not like glued to your phone and having to remember to post something every, every day. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of companies do things like this where they schedule in advance. And things like Hootsuite means like you're not going opening up every social media platform and posting something, you're just scheduling it um, in advance. Um, hold on. I think the only thing is that sometimes Twitter and Instagram does behave differently. So it's still sometimes helpful to kind of think about how, how it might work um, on each one. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about um, kind of scheduling things in advance. Hootsuite is something you can do for yourself. Um, there's like a free option, but it doesn't give you full kind of access to it unless it's a paid platform. So um, you're most likely gonna kind of use it casually unless you're using it for a company. Um, there is a, um, are other social media companies that are out there. There's like a list of them. Um, so you can always look up things. Employers might be, might have mentioned if they do use them. Um, and each one is gonna have like different platforms they connect to, um, different social networks that are supported, different costs. Um, and so most likely this would be if you're actually doing a, um, doing work, scheduling post for a business. Um, but some things do have free options if you wanted to do it for yourself. Um, so I'm going to, I talked a lot about the employer sort of side of social media, um, but kind of connecting it back to where you are. Um, so if you are looking to get started, um, probably the first thing I recommend is to, if you have personal social media, find a way to turn it professional. That means like think about who your audience is, what your voice is, what you plan to share. Um, think uh, if you're a, um, as an artist, think about like what might be, you know, make sense to kind of share on your accounts um, to kind of connect with your audience, um, which social media platforms you want to use. I usually recommend pick a couple. You can't do all of them because that's a lot of work. Um, so I would focus on one or two platforms um, and do those do those well. Um, if you're kind of working on your per, um, per, personal social media and you're making it professional and it will look good outside um, and it's not necessarily very personal, you can include links to that on your resume um, or on your own materials and share that out. But I wouldn't share your social media unless it's something that you're treating professional and you're expecting employers and other professionals to look at. Um, I would also recommend um, take on social media for um, kind of an organization or entity outside of yourself. That could be a club, an activity, a campus office, or a nonprofit. Um, I actually, the first time I really used Twitter, I actually was doing a volunteer work for a, um, a sort of a chamber of commerce sort of office in Somerville, and they were looking to promote um, local businesses to kind of get people to, to visit them. And so I was writing a lot of posts, you know, to kind of creatively highlight local businesses. And that's kind of how I learned a little bit about social media. So something like that is a great place to start because you're learning how to write in the voice of an organization um, on something outside of um, just your own personal um, experience, um, and you're learning how to organize yourself. Um, and that's something that also can help if you're looking to kind of get a job doing social media, you can use that as some experience um, on your resume. So um, when an employer is looking for experience, so what an employer might look for is they may look at your personal um, or your personal professional social media, um, because sometimes they want to kind of see how you engage you as yourself. So you want to make sure it's professional um, when you're kind of sharing that. Um, but also some employers will look for some experience for kind of a organization or business or kind of something outside of your own um, sort of experience. Um, and when you want to share your social media work, 
Um, the most important thing to, to remember is that social media, it changes really quick. Um, things change very fast. So usually it's, you know, something you want to think about sharing in sort of the form of screenshots, because sometimes they're not going to be able to find that tweet from last year that did really well. Um, and they definitely won't be able to see your data and analytics. So if you're tracking data and analytics and you definitely, and you improved kind of how well it's social media did, it's good to kind of um, capture that data and be able to share that with an employer. Um, many employers will be looking for samples of visual content that was engaging and you're writing, if you did some writing samples. So um, keeping track of that um, is also helpful as well. And then another thing that employers tend to look for is sort of like how you had a goal with social media and how you said about tackling that, how you did research and what the results were. So sometimes storytelling is a good way. And this is something you can do. It's not necessarily going to be where you send them to a Twitter feed. It might be good to kind of capture the information um, in a sort of like a PDF presentation, just showing kind of the work you did um, since they don't have access to analytics um, and things kind of change quickly with social media. So that's kind of how you might want to do that. Um, so that's a very brief introduction to um, professional social media. 